What's up guys? I want to do a video post on the written post I just did on my other Instagram page, Kriya of the Week, and it's all about the hips. In athletics, our hips our 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 hips are our primary movers. An explosive generating it's an explosive generating part of our body. When we punch, when we throw, when we kick, when we ride a bike, when we run, when we squat deadlift all about extending the hips and most of the explosive movement is about extending and flexing the hips and our hips are also very important energetically and psycho emotionally so our hips are actually balancing the energetic rhythms between our pelvis and our femurs so I'm gonna go over what those femurs and pelvis do so our pelvis is a bowl, right? And in this bowl is our spine, and our spine goes all the way up to our brain, and in the pelvis comes out our legs. The pelvis houses our complete conception of life. This is where our grounding is, okay? So if our pelvis is tilted in certain ways, we will feel we will make adjustments. Our body will make the adjustments for that. So if you imagine yourself walking down a hill, right? What way is your pelvis gonna be tilted? Down, right? And when you're walking down a hill, everything's easier, right? You're looking down at something. So when your pelvis is tilted forward and down, anteriorly rotated, there's actually an ease that you approach things Almost, if it's too much, it could be more overconfidence, okay? And almost looking down at things. So when we look out into our reality, if our pelvis is anteriorly rotated, there's going to be a superiorness that you're gonna have. Likewise, if the pelvis is tilted the other way, posteriorly, so if, if the front of the hips are coming up, it's gonna, our body is going to sense that we're walking up something, right? So you imagine a person standing at the bottom of a hill, looking up it. You know that sense that you get of like, wow, I have to climb that. So if the hips are tilted in that direction, you're probably looking at everything in your life as, wow, this is so much to do. This is so much to see. And it could be good and there's, there's positives and negatives to both sides of these things, okay? You can look at everything as if it's a huge insurmountable task or you can look at everything and, I should say, and you can look at everything as if uh, it's grand. So there's positive and negatives to both, all right? Now, the side to side thing. So in our legs, our right leg houses our motivation, our right upper leg, I should say. Our left upper leg houses our intention and our knees and our lower legs and our ankles and our feet and our toes and our hands and our arms and all these things do stuff, okay? It's not just for moving things. We do not just manipulate the environment and manipulate our position in the environment with our body. Our body was once one cell and that cell did everything and that cell split to two cells to four cells to eight cells and then eventually all of the lines that we call nerves and blood vessels and tendons and bones just pretty much went all through all of the cells so our entire body is connected right the head bones connect to the na -na 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 -na. everything's connected everything affects everything else so right leg motivation left leg intention if there is impingements, muscle tightness, uh, too much flexibility or weakness in one leg rather than the other, you may have too much motivation or too little motivation or the reverse on the intention. So can you imagine having all the intention that you can muster up, all the attention in the world because there's tons of energy flow going through your left leg, but your right leg there's very little happening there, so there's maybe some blocked energy there, and your motivation is down, okay? So you've got all the ideas in the world, but no motivation to do any of them. So that's actually the camp I sit in, and my right leg is, is uh, it needs some work, okay? I'm working on it all the time, and actually, in the last year, I feel like it's gotten a lot better, and I've actually gained some motivation. 
Um, so left leg's intention, right leg's motivation. So back to our hips. So our hips have the very important job in athletics. It's opening and closing and keeping us uh, explosive in all directions. And energetically, psychic, uh, I should say psychologically, emotionally, it's also balancing our pelvis, which is like, whoa, this, is, this task is easy. Whoa, this task is hard. Whoa, yeah, intention, I wanna do that. Oh, but I've got a, like the motivation, right? The hips are balancing all of this. And this is what's happening within the pelvis, right? Remember, the brains with all of our nerves is going up to our brain. Our, our brain isn't the only place that houses what we know as of the mind, okay? The mind, remember the clump of cells? It was all interconnected through the entire body. So it's making assessments based on the positioning of our body. I just put a bunch of information into a six minute video. I hope it was digestible. If it wasn't, let me know how I can do this better. As I said, this is just a recap on a written post that I made on Kriya of the Week and kriyaoftheweek.com or Kriya of the Week on Instagram. These, this is a project where we're exploring the human body from this standpoint. I studied psychology, I studied energy, I studied meditation, I studied the occult sciences, uh, Eastern philosophy, many, many relig religions, what we call religions. Uh, I own gyms for 10 years, and I'm putting it all into a system where we do quick 20 to 30 minute sets called Kriyas. Kriya means to do. And we do one Kriya per week, and we repeat it seven days in a row because all of these energetic effects that I'm talking about, the motivation, the intention, the, the concept of life that is housed in our body, we want to repeat the energetic effects of the movements that look a lot like exercise and breath work, some meditation mixed in there, some intention mixed in there, uh, a little bit of chanting mixed in there, and it's all to activate and utilize the, the full spectrum of our body. Okay? Not, let's not just make our body able to jump high. Let's have our body able to shift reality and shift our concept of reality. And that's all that all can actually be done with movements that look like exercise with just a little bit of a, a deeper base in the programming. So they're short Kriyas for a half hour and you repeat them and it's awesome. Kriyaoftheweek.com. All right. Thanks for listening.